Hey everybody, in this video we're going to learn how to calculate pressure volume work. Pressure volume work is done whenever you have a volume change against an external constant pressure. So if you have an increase in volume, that's called an expansion. If you have a decrease in volume, that's called a compression. And in this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the work that is done right down to the joule associated with this type of process. Now, I really like this, this topic because um, this topic directly lends itself to a discussion of how automobile engines work because the way that an automobile engine works is it takes advantage of pressure volume work. So I think it's kind of funny because a lot of us, we drive automobiles and we have all this other technology, uh, but we know very little about how it actually works. Now, <clears throat> I'm not trying to tell you that I know everything there is to know about car engines. I mean, I certainly couldn't take an engine apart and then put it back together, but I know a couple of principles, uh, a couple of basic thermodynamic principles of how fuel is used to propel a car and move it forward. And I like to share those little things I know about an automobile engine with you right about now. So the way it works is that you have these chambers inside the engine block that are called cylinders. And I'm sure you're aware of cylinders, like a four cylinder, six cylinder, eight cylinder type of engine. And typically the more cylinders that an engine has, the more powerful the engine. Of course, number of cylinders isn't everything with an engine. You also have to consider the volume of those cylinders and a bunch of other factors that are probably over my head. Uh, but if everything else is the same, uh, more cylinders means a more powerful engine. So you have these cylinders and there are pistons that control the volume of these cylinders. So in this case, we have a piston that is pointing downward. So if that piston moves downward, it's going to compress the volume of that cylinder. And conversely, if that piston travels upward, it's going to expand the volume of that cylinder. So in this image, we have the cylinder in its expanded state. And while that cylinder is in its expanded state, what's going to happen is these valves are going to open up and those valves are going to allow a fuel and air mixture into the cylinder. So we got this mixture of air and fuel inside that cylinder. And once we have that mixture, what's going to happen is that's, that piston is going to travel on a downward stroke and it's going to compress that fuel air mixture. So now we got this compressed fuel air mixture occupying a very small volume and it has a whole lot of potential energy. Once the piston is in its compressed state, uh, what's going to happen is there's a spark plug on the very end of the piston that's going to ignite the fuel air mixture. And it's basically going to cause a rapid explosion and that explosion is going to expand the volume of the container, sending that piston on a very rapid upward stroke and it's called the power stroke. So this rapid upward stroke caused by the ignition and rapid combustion of that fuel air mixture is ultimately what moves the car forward. So that is the source of the energy and then that energy is dissipated among various engine components and essentially that's what moves the car. So this is one type of pressure volume work. And again, we're gonna learn how to calculate the amount of work either given off uh, by the system or done on the system by the surroundings uh, using things that are fairly easy to measure. So again, imagine we have a cylinder uh, like this one. There's a couple of things we could uh, figure out about the cylinder just with a, uh, a ruler with a, or a tape measure, some device that measures length. Uh, we could find the area, the cross-sectional circular area of that cylinder by using pi r squared. I'm sure you're already familiar with that formula. And then we could also measure the height of that cylinder. And then we could combine the area and the height and multiply the two of them to get the volume of the cylinder. And that's a lot of useful information. But how do we use that to calculate the work that is done by a process? Well, <clears throat> remember the definition of work. Work is defined as the result of a force acting through a distance. And so we arrive at this equation where work equals force times distance. Now the distance is fairly easy to measure, but the force not so much. 
So maybe we can manipulate this equation, tweak it around a little bit to get another expression for the work using things that are much more measurable. So remember that when you're dealing with gases, the pressure of a gas is going to be the force divided by the area, the inner area of the container in which that gas resides. And we can multiply both sides of this equation by the area to get another expression for the force. And we get the force is equal to the product of the pressure and the area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that P times A term in where it says F in the work equals F times D equation. And I get this new equation right here. Work equals pressure times area times distance. Well, the distance is simply going to be the change in height. And again, that change in height for an expansion is going to be positive. For a compression, delta H is going to be negative because you're going to have a small height multiplied by a larger height. So, that, so again, for an expansion, that delta H term is going to be positive. For a compression, delta H is going to be negative. Now that A delta H term, A times delta H, <clears throat> collectively, we can call that delta V, which stands for the change in volume. And so under conditions of constant pressure, we arrive at this equation right here. So as long as we know that external pressure and we know the volume change, which can easily be determined if we know uh, the initial and final heights of that piston, as well as the area, the cross-sectional circular area of the, of, of the piston, uh, then we can calculate the change in volume of that cylinder throughout the process. So we get work equals minus P delta V. And you might be asking yourself, well, why is it minus P delta V, not just P delta V? Well, the reason why we tack on that minus sign is because it allows us to keep the convention that we're used to, the sign convention, in which anything done on the system is considered positive and anything done on the surroundings is considered negative. So in an expansion, work is going to be negative because it's being done on the surroundings. And during a compression, work is going to be positive because that work is being done on the system. So in the next example, we're going to do just one, uh, we're going to do just one example in which we calculate pressure volume work. So it says to calculate the work done by an expansion of a cylinder from 0.5 liters to 5.0 liters against a pressure of 3.60 atmospheres. <clears throat> so again, we're going to use that W equals mi uh, minus P delta V equation. And then we can simply uh, or we can plug in all of the values that we have. Now the delta V term is simply going to be the final volume minus the initial volume. Delta anything is going to be final anything minus initial anything, right? And so we just plug in our values. We get minus 3.60 atmospheres. Uh, we're going to multiply that by the difference of 5.0 liters minus 0.5 liters. And this turns out to be negative 16 liters times atmospheres. So liters times atmospheres is kind of a funky unit for energy. So why don't we convert that into joules? So uh, in your chemistry textbook, there should be some reference tables somewhere in which you'll find the conversion between liters, atmospheres, and joules. And I've already dug it up for you. Uh, it turns out that one liter times atmospheres is going to be equal to 101.3 joules. So I'm simply going to set up a conversion factor in which I put the one liters times atmospheres on the bottom and then the 101.3 joules on top. Of course, those liters atmospheres terms are going to cancel. And the answer is going to be uh, negative 1.6 times 10 to the third joules. And again, the reason why it's negative is because, again, it's an expansion. Work is being done on the surroundings. OK, so I hope you found this video uh, at least somewhat interesting and educational. And that is all. So I guess I will see you next time.